Hey everybody, welcome back to the K2N Online Paddle School. We are back here on YouTube and this week we are navigating and understanding the different feather options on your kayak or surf ski paddle. The wing blade paddle that I will be using and demonstrating these different feather angles comes to us from fastpaddler.com. I'm using the Braca 11 Extra Light in the 675 sizing. We have mentioned Fast Paddler in the past when talking about wing blade paddle guides. So don't forget, if you want to get a high quality paddle, these are the guys to get in touch with. Their information will be in our description box. Thank you guys so much for supporting the YouTube channel. Before we start and break down the feathering, I want to use this as an opportunity to express that everything that you see on this YouTube channel and on the K2N Online Paddle School.com is not my personal innovation in the world of paddling, but taking in different resources of information, funneling and filtering it and allowing it to be a lot more palatable for the average paddler. Taking in this information can be confusing and overwhelming. Some people may phrase it a certain way that others do not understand. It is my job to help you all navigate this information clearly. With feathering, I do not hail to one specific belief on feathering. I think it is important to understand the pros and the cons of each different feather option. Understanding your skill level, your environment, and what you want to do with your wing blade paddle will allow you to navigate this field of different feather angles to match specifically what you're looking for. There is no right or wrong way but there is a best and worst based on your situation and your overall application with the sport. So let's break it down. What is feathering? Feathering is the offset in the blade angles to each other in a fixed position. What this orientation means is that is as one blade is oriented for a paddle stroke, like so, the opposite blade is going to be oriented either to mirror this or to be the opposite. The higher degree feather you have, the more sideways this blade is going to be, which makes it more aerodynamic. With no feather, as this paddle is oriented for a paddle stroke, the opposite blade is going through the air like so. And this orientation is much less aerodynamic than having one that is 90 degrees to the side. The origins of feathering come from using traditional flat blade paddles. And as we go through those strokes, there is a tremendous amount of force that this is going to pick up on as you're completing the stroke. As you're putting the blade into the water and completing that stroke, this is gonna be pushing and grabbing a tremendous amount of air. By turning the sideways, it cuts down on that air resistance, making the paddle stroke easier. In the canoe stroke, the feathering is encompassed during the recovery phase of the stroke. So as we take the stroke, when the blade goes back to the front, we can use our wrists and hands to feather the blade as it punches back to the front. With the kayak paddle, as we are taking a stroke, the opposite blade is traveling forward and we are not in control of manipulating it because we're focused on grabbing the water. With flat blade paddles specifically, you will feel a tangible amount of resistance from this shape. A great analogy is if you're driving in a vehicle and you stick your arm out the window and you have your hand placed like so, you will find a tremendous amount of force based on how fast you're going. The faster you're going, the harder it is to hold your hand in that position. You are grabbing that air resistance and you have to constantly fight it. If you were to turn your hand sideways, there is almost no resistance here because the surface area has gone down dramatically. And then it becomes easy to move your hand back and forth through space. Even if you're going at 100 miles an hour, your hand cutting through the air is much more efficient than turning it this way. One thing to note before we start breaking down the different feather angles is the aerodynamic shape of the wing. It is not traditionally flat on its back surface, it is curved in an orientation that facilitates airflow coming off the top and the bottom. Having a high point in the middle and low points on either edge makes this very aerodynamic in its inherent shape facing in this direction. Of course, as we turn this more and more, right now we're becoming increasingly more aerodynamic. Its inherent shape is not the same as a traditional flat blade paddle that would literally trap air air is going to find a way to rush off of the shape of the paddle here. So again, the whole point of this video is to go over the pros and the cons, navigating and understanding. 
So let's start with the most simplistic option for using your wing blade paddle, which would be with a zero degree feather orientation. The downside to zero degree feather is its inherent risk of pushing the most amount of air as the blade is in the air during the stroke. As we've just gone over, this is very aerodynamic. So the amount of force that you're gonna find on this is not as great as comparing it to a flat blade paddle, but it is still progressively more force in this orientation than it would be in any orientation turning towards this 90 degree angle. When discussing feathered angles, this is one of the biggest reasons that people try to push away from zero degree feathering. The upside to this is your ability to brace with the paddle is instantaneously simple. The success rate of bracing with a zero degree feather paddle is almost 100%. As you hold the paddle in your hand, the orientation of the blades are going to be in a position like so, where the flat edge of the paddle here is going to be touching the water. The muscle memory in using this to make contact with the water is very simplistic. If you give a brand new paddler a zero degree feather paddle, they will instantly be successful with the orientation of their paddle strokes as the blade is going into the water, as well as their inherent ability to learn bracing because they don't need to manipulate the blade's angles. It is oriented correctly for them to find that connection. Their orientation of finding forward paddle strokes is almost perfect. As you go from being a first time paddler to being a savvy racer, the air resistance found on the opposite blade being in the air is usually not the make or break in your overall speed or potential. Your ability to get into good position, hold good position, find that pressure in the water, move gracefully in an unstable environment. These are the key components. The air resistance up here is negligible before all those factors come into play. So moving on to the next degree feather and its breakdown, notice how I said that the blade orientation is almost perfect. When we're taking the forward strokes, the blade's orientation to the water is comparable to our hand's position. One of the ideologies is that zero degree feather, your hands are always in position to grab the water in an ideal way which is not inherently true. The offset found in the paddle makes up for the imbalances of our upper body. Having perfectly symmetrical collarbones, humerus links, forearm links, hand links, finger links, making sure the hands are spaced perfectly apart. If any of these factors are ever so slightly off, as you set up the blade for the stroke, this blade is going to be oriented properly or slightly improperly. With zero degree feather paddlers, they will typically have one side stroke that is not oriented correctly. The downside of having a feather means that you need to have finesse with your hand to orient the blade properly. But at zero degrees, unless you are perfectly symmetrical, one side needs to have an offset and movement with the hand and the wrist to set up the blade or the blade will go in sideways. And again, we're only talking a small amount, but this is a big difference where you have one side that is perfectly oriented and the opposite side that is oriented just ever so slightly off. Having a small degree feather can offset this where you can have two hands being the control hand and each time that you take the stroke, the paddle is in a position oriented to match the inefficiencies and the inequality of your limb links. This can come down to a technical breakdown as well if you are more flexible on one side than the other because it is your dominant side versus your weak side. These are things that play into the feathering being slightly off from one side to the other. So the easiest way to identify what feather do you personally need to have two control hands is simply hold the paddle with a double death grip. Obviously when you're racing and paddling you would not do this but we want to control this paddle to make sure there is no slippage between the skin and the carbon. What you want to do is take your paddle strokes and orient the blade each time without relenting on your hold with your hand holding it very tight and taking a bunch of strokes as we go through here. Hopefully I don't hit everything in my room. Having the ferrule open means that it is going to twist ever so slightly to the left or to the right as you take your strokes. For me, it is about 25 degrees to the right, 
orients the paddle perfectly where I can use both hands as my control hand and no matter what I'm doing, as long as I have a firm grip with my hand, the blade will always be oriented for an optimal forward stroke. Prioritizing the orientation of the blade to match your body's position inherently without needing the finesse of orienting your hand every single stroke, again, is very beginner friendly. The downside is you will have one blade that is ever so slightly off in its orientation. When you go to brace, you now have to move your wrists ever so slightly to make sure that you are maximizing the surface area of the blade to make contact with the water. Overall, identifying this by opening the ferrule and taking a bunch of panel strokes and then locking the ferrule, this gives you a great middle ground between having zero degree feather and having a very high feather angle. Everybody is a little different. Everybody's stroke and entomology and movement is all going to be slightly different. So where you lie on this ferrule is going to be different. Again, you want the paddle to try and match what you want from it. So instead of conforming to the paddle's movement, have the paddle conform to your movement. So the next feather angles that we're going to talk about is going to be between 60 and 90 degrees. Whether it is to the right or to the left, either way, it is a trained skill. If you give a first time paddle a 90 degree to the left feather paddle, they will take one stroke successfully and the second stroke they will go into the water. It is a very brutal way to teach people the finesse of orienting their paddle because each time they take a wing blade stroke where the blade is sideways, they will go into the water and instantly get punished for it. If they're in a super stable boat and they can't fall out, the paddle is going to slip through the water and slam into their hull. Their fingers are going to get whapped on the fiberglass. There are all kinds of downsides to teaching somebody this very steep learning curve. Those paddlers that are proponents for high feather angles either have a lot of time working these angles or have come from a classical training background. If you have been to a sprint training camp or to your nation's marathon canoe training platform, that means that you have this classical training under your belt and have spent time orienting the paddle for each stroke to get this small advantage at the cost of a tremendous amount of finesse. Having the control hand being the right hand means that the right hand just holds on tight and it's good. The left hand is now going to have to open constantly. And if I hold this paddle tight, when I set up for the stroke, the paddle is going to be sideways. I have to orient this blade very specifically to get this paddle where I want it before taking the stroke. This additional wrist movement becomes very complicated for paddlers even when they get the hang of it. What happens is the timing of their wrist movement not being perfect now affects the majority of their stroke. If you are engaging this wrist movement while the blade is still in the water, you are lifting up a bit of water, you have resistance on one of the weakest joint structures of the body. Paddlers that have wrist and elbow issues typically stems from them starting this feathering process too soon in the stroke. Again, we're talking fractions of a second. So one tenth of a second later when the blade is in the air, now you can move this wrist up and down freely because there's no resistance. If you do it while it's still in the water, you're weak for a moment and all of these joints here are going to be impacted negatively. The next timing is making sure that your wrist position is ideal before engaging the water. The blade goes into the water sideways and you're pushing with your top wrist to try and orient the paddle properly. You're now out of position with more joints of the body while you're trying to find a tremendous amount of power. It doesn't mean that it's impossible. There's just a very steep learning curve. Again, with zero degree or a slight feather, you can approach the paddle stroke and throw caution to the wind and find pressure immediately. With a high degree feather, there is a lot of nuances that come into play that may take years to master. Finding the brace on your control hand is very easy, but then on the opposite side, you have to find this crazy wrist flick to find pressure with the water because if you brace with this edge of the paddle, it's going to go in the water and so are you. Again, there's nothing wrong with having this. If you have this skill learned and you already have it under your belt, there's no reason to go to zero or to drop down. You have gone through the hardest route and your reward now is minimizing the drag that is on the paddle through the air. It is the path of most resistance and it takes a ton of effort and time and it is for a negligible amount of resistance you get to bypass. Is that the difference between winning your next race? Potentially, yes. For many paddlers, though, spending the next five years getting that 
that nuance just right to go five seconds faster over a 10 kilometer race, it may not be worth it. Staying empathetic to how difficult it is to learn 60 or 90 degree feather is very important when teaching new paddlers. If you paddle at a high feather degree angle, a great way to feel what a new paddler feels is to put your paddle on zero and try paddling. You will have so much built-in muscle memory that you will naturally rotate your paddle in your hand when you don't need to. Now the paddle is oriented properly, but you're rotating it sideways looking for that 90 degree angle that used to be there. The paddle goes in sideways, you start to find this unsteadiness, and this is what it's like for a new paddler using those high feather angles. In a training and club structure, you can impart these ideas to people over a long period of time and try to instill the technical nuances to be successful at that. For paddlers that paddle solo and go unchecked, it can create muscle memory issues that plague them and shorten their paddling career. So we'll run through it again, having zero degree feather, the pros, having a very easy brace, the paddle is oriented pretty close to correct on the forward strokes. The con is you have to push this blade through the air. Unlocking the ferrule, taking a number of paddle strokes and finding whatever degree angle we're on, which I'm on 25 here. Now you can double control hand here, which also gives you the option to open your top hand each time you go back and forth, right? Your bottom hand can always be the control hand because it is oriented with your upper body for a proper forward stroke. The bracing becomes a little bit more difficult, but for the most part, even at 25 degrees, you'll have the majority of the blade hitting the water and not slicing through. And as an extra bonus, you get to mitigate some of the wind resistance at the top. Then the most difficult is having that 90 degree feather, making sure that your wrist movements are moving properly and quickly at the right times. It can have a payoff if you go through the route of learning it. It is most difficult to find the brace with your wrist orientation. It is hardest to orient the blade perfectly straight each time, but again, you have no air resistance at the top as you take your forward strokes. Thanks again to Fast Paddler for sending us out this sweet Raka 11. If you want one of these paddles, check out their website today. Don't forget to check out the K2N Online Paddle School.com. We have over 200 informational videos to help you navigate owning a boat, loading a boat, storing your boat, taking it out on the water, all the technique involved, everything you need to know to be successful out on the water and off the water, we have on the website for you. If you have any questions or anything to add about the feathered paddles, please leave a comment here. Also send me an email or get in touch with me on the live chat function on the website. Thank you guys so much for supporting the YouTube channel. We're over 1800 subscribers, which is awesome. We're getting really close to 2000. We'll see you guys next week for the next paddling tip.